This is City Happenings. I'm Mayor David Black. The City Hall Art Gallery continues to feature local artists. It's the first time that the current artist has shown her work at City Hall. Hear what she has to say. Winter Wonderland was an incredible success again. 6,000 of you attended the annual event. This was the Papillion Community Foundation Executive Director's first event since taking over. She gives you the breakdown on how things went. And Papillion sees another ribbon cutting. An Omaha business brings an office on Golden Gate Drive. Thanks, Mayor Black. The local artist featured in the City Hall Art Gallery since November says her first impressions of the art gallery changed dramatically. I was here for another showing, and I thought, gosh, this is pretty small. But then I thought, you know, we can make this really good. Um, everyone can display what they have, and... Um, it can be inspiring for someone. As to her thoughts about having an outlet like the City Hall Gallery, Roberta says that it's fantastic. You need to support people and you need to encourage the arts and the fact that they would set aside an area to uh, display art from people who live in Papillion is wonderful. And it's very encouraging for anybody who's just starting out and would eventually like to display in this gallery. Roberta invites people to view all the displays shown at the City Hall Art Gallery. I think we need to support each other and encourage each other. Uh, like I said, no matter what level you are, you know, if you're a beginner or if you've been painting a long time, I, uh, you know, we always love to hear encouragement and you can always learn something new. Her current exhibit is nature themed. I did grow up on a farm and I guess that's deeply ingrained in me and um, I love you know, what God gave us and the beautiful things surrounding us. And, um, you know, you can't make it more beautiful than it really is, but um, it's something I appreciate and I enjoy painting serene settings. Winter Wonderland was held on Thanksgiving weekend. It was the first major event for the Papillion Community Foundation's new executive director. The feedback I've gotten is overwhelmingly positive. When you think there was probably close to 6,000 people, 6,000 people mm -hmm. uh, downtown, um, and managing that, uh, uh, you know, I think the response was overwhelmingly positive. They loved the fact that 84th Street was closed. They loved, they loved the fact that the, the fire pits were down the center of the street. Local businesses gave a thumbs up response. All of the downtown businesses that I've spoken to, you know, that are in this area, uh, overwhelming sales on that evening. I mean, we certainly have tried to get out to those outlying businesses that aren't just right down in downtown Papillion, and, and we have some, some ideas of how to do that better. And so there's always things you can take away um, with good feedback and bad feedback, you know. So, um, I mean, we, we are always open to suggestions and listening to those suggestions and um, you know tweaking things so that we can make it better for everyone not just you know the downtown but the, all the businesses that support downtown. One of the new attractions was the Chris Kindle Market. We started with just a few vendors so we didn't really want it to be too big because we needed to see how it would go. Um, almost all the vendors sold out of their stuff <clears throat> so that was amazing. <laughs> Bianchi Candles had to go home and get more candles and uh, Paparista sold out of all their popcorn. <laughs> and um, I know we had, you know, we had some really beautiful pottery and she did well, you know, uh, the, the Usborne Books did really well. So, um, and then our vendor that sold the um, apple cider also had these beautiful papillion, you know, ornaments, Christmas ornaments. So those went really well. The Tri-City Food Pantry benefited from this event. People in the Chris Kunnell Market were you know shopping and doing that, and then I also helped them you know promote the the food pantry drive, which was great. And we for a first drive for the food pantry, we did pretty well. We had one vendor who was selling hot cider for a dollar, and raised over a hundred dollars uh, for the food pantry, mm -hmm. which was great. There will need to be some tweaking on a few things. Not anything major, um, you know, just a little bit tweaking, you know, tweaking that that some of the roots some of the street closures, how we're going to manage those street closures. And I think, you know, having, you know, the support of the Papillion Police Department on that, you know, um, since they don't have to really, 
gauge the traffic coming down 84th Street that we just need to know where to put them, you know, to help with their presence. And I think we have a good idea of that. A big challenge is waiting for the free carriage rides. Obviously, there's always lines for the carriage rides. There's just not a whole lot that we can do about that because when you give away something free, I mean, everybody wants it, and that's that's what it's for. Um, but I think, you know, <clears throat> some people expect there to be lines and some people don't. So we're trying to do something maybe ne different next year to help manage that line. But the bottom line is not everybody, unfortunately, gets to ride. I wish we could. Um, adding carriages is really not an option. Um, so we kind of have to, because we have to stick to that budget. So that's really important uh, to keep the event free. So, um, you know, we just, we have a couple options and what we're going to look at there. Um, they loved pretty much everything else. They loved the fact there was an extra trolley. So that if you couldn't ride the carriage, you could get on the trolley. One fix is keeping people from walking in front of the horse-drawn carriages. So that was something we didn't really think about, you know, but it happened. So um, we got great feedback from the carriage company. And, so we talked about some of those ideas. More light is needed on the Christ Kindle Market area. We had some, but we needed more, so we did. We got a way to fix that. Um, uh, you know, just we were a little head on the stage, so just kind of make sure we fill that and maybe change that up a little bit. Uh, so, and we, you know, we obviously ran out of things like s'mores and hot chocolate. But when you have that kind of a crowd, you're going to run out of stuff. So. Um, and we're not going to have that big a crowd every year if the weather isn't, you know, as perfect as it was. So uh, it's hard. It's kind of hard to plan for. You have to kind of wait till right at the event. But um, just little fixes, really nothing, nothing major. So that's good. It was surprising how many people disregarded the street closures and worked their way around the barriers to park their cars. It wasn't a negative thing, but it was just, oh well, we can go park over there. <laughs> so. Um, <clears throat> I think if we tweak that a little bit, I think that we can make that a lot safer. The whole idea of having the street closed was for safety. And, 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 and obviously it made it a, a great place for people to dwell and to walk around and enjoy that in a safe manner without having to worry about traffic. The fire pits were a great help and actually acted as a sort of crowd control. The placement of the fires really helped people take them not just from that main stage area, People visited that area, but they also came downtown, down towards First Street, which drew them into the businesses, which was great. And then they would come back up and get in line for either Santa or uh, the carriages. Nothing's perfect, but overall, this year's Winter Wonderland worked pretty smoothly. There were little behind-the-scenes things that we can fix, but overall, I think it was, you know, it ran pretty smoothly, considering that it was kind of the perfect storm for um, the amount of people that we had. Finally, the Parks Department head, Tony Gowan, says the staff strung a quarter of a million lights throughout the city. I can't even thank those guys enough. You know, the, those uh, Parks and Facilities guys start two months before the event putting up those lights, and that's a lot of work. A lot of work. That's a lot of lights. And then to make sure then that they all light up at the right time, and that they stay lit, and that they, you know, I can't thank Tony and his crew enough for, for doing that. A conflict resolution center based in Omaha opens a papillion office. On behalf of the mayor and city council I just wanted to congratulate you guys on the new space and thank, thank you, you for uh, bringing a location down here to papillion. Uh, you guys offer some really valuable services to businesses and family and we've got a growing business community and a lot of new residents coming so we're excited to have you here so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the board of directors, uh, I want to thank you all for coming this afternoon. Uh, this has been something that be, we've been working on as a board and a staff for a long time. Uh, it's been a goal of ours for a number of years to, to have a presence here in, in Sarpy, and, and here we are. So thanks to everybody whose hard work made this happen, and thank you for such a warm welcome to the community. Three, two, <laughs> one. It's Christmas week and we invite everyone to enjoy the holiday lights in the downtown area. A quarter of a million lights set areas around the city ablaze with holiday excitement. And we thank everyone for your input in naming our new community center. You tell a lot of thought and creativity went into your choices. Thanks for taking part. To stay up to date with what's going on in Papillion, there are lots of ways to do it. You can find us on Facebook, follow the City of Papillion on Twitter, or even watch our YouTube channel. 
Information about all of our departments and programs is available on our website. For more about Papillion, go to www.papillion.org. Just call the Mayor's Hotline at 402-827-1111. Thanks for watching.